Ryan from Warner Robins, Georgia. And uh, all this kind of started out, I was probably, I think I was about 17 years old. Um, a couple friends of my of mine and myself were, we were out one night riding around, you know, like teenagers do. And um, we had this place, um, they called it Stonewall. It was uh, like a little creek where you go swimming at, and there was like a waterfall and a little pond at the end of it. Well, we were on the road that went past it, and it's kind of out in a, uh, out in the country, you would say. It's away from most houses and stuff like that. And it was probably about 2, 2.30 in the morning. Um, we were just out riding around, and we come to the stop sign, and we made a right-hand turn. And we were just about maybe 100 yards from where this creek was. And all of a sudden, this Bigfoot, because there ain't no doubt in my mind what I seen, it come up like out of the – the ditch line from where the creek was and walked right out in front of us. I mean, we, we come to a complete stop in the middle of the road and it was probably, if I had to say maybe 50 feet from us and it kind of just turned and looked at us and just proceeded across the road in front of us and went up a hill on the other side of the road, you know, and, and when you see something like this, it make you rethink everything you've ever thought in your life. Cause you know, most people, even myself, well, I didn't believe in nothing like that until you see it. And, you know, there's no way there would have been anybody out there in the middle of the night where we were at in a costume. You know, it, it was obvious what we've seen. And, um, you know, that sat with me for a really long time. I just, it really make you pay more attention to the things you see and you hear. Well, now fast forward to... About six years ago, I was in the general vicinity of the same place. Uh, we were doing a, a pond for this lady, and we were hauling. Uh, we went in there to seal this pond up. It was it wouldn't hold water. And um, where this place was was probably maybe a mile and a half, two miles from where I'd had that sighting. And um, we were taking a traco in, and I was following the traco in a truck. You know, and the track up moves real slow, and we're going down. It's probably a half a mile to a mile from the paved road back into where this pond was. And this used to be, a, I guess, an old hunting club years ago. So we're going down through these woods, and every maybe 50 to 75 feet, there would be a like a row cut up through the woods, and you could see all the way up through the woods for probably, you know, a quarter of a mile. Well going out through there and I'm following the track hoe and I'm looking up these shooting lanes thinking I might see a deer or something like that. And I just happened to look and all of a sudden there was what I assumed to be a Bigfoot. It was kind of crossing one of the shooting lanes. And like I said, this is the same general area of where I had spotted one back when I was, you know, 17. And I actually took a picture of it with my phone. And, of course, you know how some of these pictures are that are real far off. You can't really distinguish for sure that's what it was, but it was upright, walking on two feet. It wasn't no bear, nothing like that. And, unfortunately, that phone got broke a long time ago, and I lost that picture. And I couldn't regain it back any kind of way. And then um, my wife was in the same area two years ago and she was coming from her friend's house and she turned right off this road uh, real close to where we had spotted that one the first time. And they claimed they seen something kind of off the edge of the road, you know, like getting ready to cross the road and they they swore them down. That's what it was, what they seen, you know? So, you know, it's, it's been ever since I've seen that, Bigfoot the very first time I've always anytime I'm near woods I'm always paying attention looking especially at night time and um, where I live at now I probably live maybe 10 miles from where that I had spotted that one at we've actually a couple years ago um, we were sitting on our porch and it was probably around midnight you know and and I, I used to be an avid hunter I know the differences in sounds of different animals uh, coyotes, um, you know, 
the, you know, because the coyote will fool you. They'll make noise that you'll think it's a Bigfoot, but they're not. But um, we heard some noises. There's a, from where we live at, probably a mile from where we, we're at, Oh, there's a big section of woods. It's probably, you know, several hundred acres. And uh, we heard some whoops and uh, we've, we've heard some, some, some howls that we know were, to me, they were not coyotes, you know. So uh, that's just some of the, that's some things that I've seen and heard. Um, I have a friend at work that they're, he's a big avid turkey hunter. And uh, they're hunting some land down south of where I live at. Um, I'm not sure exactly where it's at, but they actually found some footprints weekend before last down there where they're hunting. And he was telling me a story the other day at work about they were down there about three weekends ago hunting and said they were sitting uh, at the edge of this, this clearing, you know, hunting these turkeys. And he said, there's pine trees down there. And this was during that time we had some pretty strong winds. Um, I don't know if they were like, you know, 15, 20 mile an hour winds. He said the nearest pine tree to where they were sitting was at least 150, 200 yards away from them. There was no pine trees nowhere around them where they were sitting. He said he was sitting there and all of a sudden a pine cone landed right in front of him. And he said he looked over there at his buddy, and they looked at one another, and they was like they were thinking to themselves. He said, "There's no way that wind blowed that pine cone 150 yards, you know, or 50 feet or whatever it was to where they were sitting." He said, and all of a sudden another one landed right in front of them again. He said, after about the third or fourth pine cone hit, he said it was time to get up and leave. They wasn't going to stay there no longer, you know. And I've always heard stories that Bigfoots will throw objects at you, sticks, rocks stuff like that and he's pretty sure that's what was causing this that was you know trying to you know tell them that hey you know you need to get out of here you're in my area um that um and then like i said they they told me that i guess it was the weekend before that's when they had found the footprints and uh i asked him i said well, why didn't you take pictures of the footprints and uh he said well i didn't have my phone some turkey hunting i didn't want to take a chance my phone going off and then um, I guess it was the day before yesterday, his friend seen the same thing again, some footprints, and he did take pictures of them, and he sent them to my friend. He showed me the footprints, and the footprints are in line with one another. And anybody that studies much about Bigfoot, they'll, they'll know that most of their footprints always line up or a human has a staggered walk. So... You know, and where they're at, there's nobody else down there. Nobody goes there. It's all fenced and gated. You can't get in there unless you have a key to the gate. And uh, that's just, you know, that's just another thing that kind of confirms of the things I've seen and heard. In the general area this is in? Now, the area that I had my sighting in was here in Warner Robins, Um it's a road called Hauser's Mill Road. It dead ends into uh, Highway 96, which is actually, I think, Peach County. I live in Houston County, which is adjacent to Peach County. Um, the uh, siding I had would actually be in Peach County on Highway 96, right at Hauser's Mill Road, probably 200 yards from where Hauser's Mill Road dead ends into um, Highway 96. Now, I noticed that whenever I started posting on your on the site on, on the Bigfoot side about what I had seen, I actually had a guy uh, text me and tell me that he lived in Perry, and that he had had some sightings in the general area, but it was years ago. Now, um, the the sighting that my friend at work had, I'm not sure the county they were in, but it was probably about thirty miles from here south of Houston County. I'm not sure of the county. I work for Centerville. I, I work for the utility department here. Well, I, I live within a quarter of a mile from Centerville. It's right here beside me. And um, there was that newspaper clip that I come across um, about the siding. And where that siding was, 
was basically right down the street and down the bottom of the hill from where I live. I mean, within a half mile. Um, there's a big, I guess you'd call it a valley that cuts across, you know, all through Centerville. Well, apparently that's where somebody had spotted that Bigfoot out there in that field in that bottom. Well, when I was in elementary school, and the school is probably another half mile up the road from where that is. Um, now, at this time, I was probably in the fourth or fifth grade. Across from school was nothing but peach fields, okay? It's all developed housing now, but at the time, it's just peach fields. It was all farmland out here. That You know, there wasn't very many houses. Um, we had... Uh, it was the uh, best way I could describe it. Well, I remember it was like a tornado drill. We all had to go out in the hallways and they locked the school down and all that. Well, we noticed we heard a lot of sirens and we could see kind of out the window of the classroom there was fire trucks and all this coming into the air and police cars. And we just thought it was fire drill like normal. Okay. So later on in life, you know, I was probably 23, 24 years old. I actually had, was working for the city at the time. Well, I got to talking to one of the police officers that had been there back when I was a kid in school. He was a real older man. And uh, we got talking, and uh, he told me that what had happened that day was in the peach field across from that school, there was a, they called it a creature had been spotted in that peach field. And that's what it was all about. That's why they locked the school down, because it was right across the street from the school. So, you know, you think about that, what they said, you know, they didn't come out and say it was a Bigfoot, but they said it was a creature, and they didn't, they couldn't identify it. Um, You know, and you got to figure back then there was peach fields and farms everywhere around here. You know, so I can... I can see why they'd go in the peach field to get peaches out there, you know, to, to eat the peaches. It's pretty obvious to me that they're out there, they're around. I've heard, you know, I've seen a lot of videos and a lot of clips, and a lot of them are fake. I've seen some that I believe that are real. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit more prepared now to where if something happens, I'm going to try my best to get a picture or a video or something. It could be several reasons. One, I think that uh, they're kind of like us. I mean, I think that it's a possibility that they bury their dead and um, or they destroy the dead. They, you know, uh, burn it or they they, they bury it. Um, and I think that's one of the reasons. And, and plus, if you study uh, decomposition, it don't take but a matter of days for a, a animal to be gone completely and the bones get scattered or the bones get destroyed used eat chewed up whatever um but i think in my opinion i think that they bury their dead i think that they that's really one of the reasons you don't find bones and, and skeleton remains and stuff like that um i don't I, I'm, I'm not gonna say that i'm not so much of a believer in this uh extraterrestrial that's you know they, they're like that i don't believe that i believe they're a a distant uh, relative of, of humans um i think that they have uh i think they've been around here longer than we have and i think they i mean it's just like cameras you ever noticed that you don't really see uh trail cam that many trail cam photos or if you do see it's not very good photos i think they know what cameras are and they avoid them um and i think that uh, they try to avoid people as much as they can and I think most of the sightings are by accident. Um, I don't. When people go out and they, they make the calls and they do the wood knocks and all this stuff, yeah, you might get a reply back from a wood knock. That could be possible. But I think when you go out there and you make all this noise and these calls, I think they try to get away from you. I think they try to avoid the people. They got to be some link down the line somewhere. For the simple fact of the way they're built, I mean, you know, they're upright and and they're bipedal and they walk like a human. Um, I mean, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I'm not a scientist, but you know, if you look at all the evidence, they 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 walk in a similar fashion to us. 
they walk up right um they uh you know they they live off the land they they're 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 smarter than people think they are i mean look how long they've been out and around and all over the, the world you know it, it'd be one thing if somebody just seen them in one one area but they've been seen all over the world it makes me think they've been here probably longer than we have um I mean, but like I said, I'm, I'm just speculating. I don't really know. If you ever see one, it will change everything you've ever thought about in life. You know, and it's it really makes you think. You're, 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 you grow up being taught that, oh, oh, this is just fake. It's not real. There's no such thing. There's no such thing as UFOs. There's no such thing as Bigfoot. It's all just, a, you know, something somebody made up. And then you grow up believing this, and then you have this sighting, and you know in your mind you you, you ain't been drinking, you ain't on no drugs, you're straight as a board, you know what you've seen, plus you got two witnesses with you that's seen the same thing. It'll just make you stop and think, you know, this is real. This is not something somebody made up. And it'll just make you stop and think about some of the other things in life that you think is not real. You know, um, it's just, uh, it's kind of a life changing event to see one in person, you know, and you can have all these people say what they want to say. I mean, I know what I seen. It was no human in a costume. It was a Bigfoot. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. What did it look and, like? Descri describe that first sighting, uh, what that Bigfoot looked like. All uh, right. Well, he was kind of a multicolored brownish hair maybe with a little bit of redness into his hair and he was uh the everybody said they looked like a gorilla in the face well i didn't really see so much as the way it looked like a gorilla he didn't have a protruding nose he was probably best i can remember he was probably at least eight foot tall and he had hair covering his whole body his eyes look kind of set back in his face a little bit and everybody says oh they got red glowing eyes well i don't think they got red glowing eyes the headlights of the vehicle when he turned and looked at us made it reflect kind of red but i think that's just a reflection of his eyes um you know unlike a uh, most domestic animals or humans we don't have that reflectiveness in our eyes like they do they're like kind of like a deer a deer reflect its eye shine you know back at you and i think that's what it is um i know that it it his arms seem to be longer than a human it's like his arms was the way he walked his arms was like his hands was to his knees you know they were really long um and the road when he come across in front of us he didn't make four steps and he was across the road he was gone i mean it, it happened pretty fast but when he turned and looked at us he didn't stop he just looked at us kind of turned his head and looked and kept walking at the same time like you know he was on a mission to get across that road and get away from us um but the his head was kind of conical a little bit Best I can remember. And I yeah, I remember I was 17 years old a long time ago. But I do remember the hair was like pretty really long. And it wasn't so much. I guess it was kind of matted looking, you know, um, like somebody's hair that hadn't been combed. And it was kind of long. And uh, I remember his hands, like his fingers and everything had hair on all over his, his, his hands. I remember that <clears throat> and um it's like his shoulders it's almost like his head was kind of sunk down in his shoulders a little bit almost like it his shoulders kind of went up into his head you know and and unlike a human how we stick our shoulders are lower than our head his was his head was real close to his shoulders um but like i said it was it's, it's been a long time ago since i've seen him um, but from my memory, that's, you know, that's about the way I would describe him, but it was brownish, reddish kind of hair, you know, mixed all together, brown and red, best way I could describe it. 
a lot of people have talked about seeing orbs and craft and, and you haven't. Is that right? No, that's not true. Okay, well, tell us about that then. Oh, I've seen UFOs. That's what you want to know. Back when I was probably, true Lord, 12 years old, I had this one neighbor that all the kids hung out in his front yard, and that's where we played at every night. We had a big street light out there in the front yard, and we all hung out there, and we played football and so forth in the yard. And uh, we seen, there was probably five of us there that night, and we literally seen, <clears throat> best way I can describe it, as a round disc with lights going around it, kind of come into view up in the sky. And we all just kind of stopped and stared at it. And just by the time we all got a good look at it, it just went away, just vanished. To this day, I believe it was a UFO. Um, year before last, I think it was. Let's see. I've been here at my new place three years. So it's been three and a half years ago where we lived at, my wife and myself were sitting on our front porch. And where I live at, there's an Air Force base here. And we were sitting, our porch faced the direction of the Air Force base. Now, the Air Force base is about five miles from where we live. And we were sitting there on, uh, on the porch, and, you know, we're looking off in the sky, and we're sitting there talking. And all of a sudden, we noticed this white light appeared in the sky. And I was like, I told her, I said, do you see that? She goes, yeah. I said, it's probably an airplane, you know, base or something. And then all of a sudden, another white light appeared kind of, you know, to the side of it. And then a few minutes later, another white light appeared right above it. So it was in a triangle. And I said, are you seeing this? She goes, yeah, I'm looking right at it. And I was like, what in the world is this? And then all of a sudden, the light on top, it went out. Then the one to the right went out. Then the one to the left went out. Well, I don't know of anything that's on an Air Force base that could do that. It wasn't a light shining from the ground up. It was just like. Somebody turned a light bulb on in the sky and then another one and then another one. So, I mean, it's something that can't be explained. And found out that there was a whole lot of people in our town that seen that. And, uh, of course, they say that the Air Force Base have no clue. They have nothing to do with it. They don't know what it was. So, you know, that's something to make you think about right there. Have um, you ever seen an, an orb um, associated with the Bigfoot? No, I've never seen an orb associated with a Bigfoot. Um, now, I don't go out in the woods searching for Bigfoot. Because um, after what I seen that night when I was 17, I wouldn't want to meet up with one of them in a dark wooded area. You know what I mean? Um, I, I No, I don't do that. I've never, I've never um, went hunting for Bigfoot. And I've never seen orbs associated with them or nothing like that. I've seen orbs associated with ghosts. Um, I used to be a member of Byron Paranormal Society, and uh, we've done a lot of ghost investigations. And I have seen what we claim to be orbs associated with ghosts and the supernatural and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of people don't believe in that, but, you know, until you see something um, that's right in front of you, 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 a lot of people won't believe it until something actually happens and they actually see it. It'll turn you into a believer. Um I've experienced, I've seen apparitions, I've seen ghosts, if you want to call it that. Um, so I know that it's real. Uh, we've seen things happen that can, cannot be explained. So, you know, I'm a believer in all this stuff. Um, it's uh, kind of started when I was a little kid. What got me believing this, my mother told me a story about when my great-grandmother died. They lived in what they called a shotgun house. And uh, my great-grandmother, she died at home in her bed with my grandmother and my mother there. And they said the moment my grandmother, great-grandmother took her last breath, they said a ball of fire come in the window, across the bed, down the hallway, and out the door of the house. You know, there was, I don't know how many people there witnessed that. And... uh my grandmother would never tell me a lie. My grandmother was always a straight shooter to me. And she said, you know, she was there. She's seen it with her own eyes. My mama seen it with her own eyes. Um, you know, so that's kind of where it all started with the, the paranormal thing. When, you know, I always had that in my mind all my life, you know, of what was, what, what that was. Um, so, you know, I've had 
a lot of experience of seeing a lot of things. And uh, I've been around a long time. I'm, you know, I'm 57 years old and um, heard and seen a lot of different stories and seen things that, you know, it takes, I guess, time to, to see things like this. You know, you get older, you, you see a lot, a lot of things, you know, over, over a period of time. Um, I've heard other people in the surrounding area tell me they've heard noises that, that can't be explained. And um, other than my friend at work, you know, the sightings he had. Um, but none of it's going to ever add up to what I seen because I know what I seen when I was 17. And that's that right there was enough to substantiate that it was true and it was real. I've not personally seen one face to face, but I've seen a lot of a lot of evidence. I've been there when other people have seen them. Tell me, first of all, how you got interested in Bigfoot. So the way that I got interested in Bigfoot, I guess I've been looking for Bigfoot my entire life and didn't realize it. Uh, when I was young, I hunted and fished with my dad all over the place. And in 2011, he had passed away. 2012-ish, I was watching Finding Bigfoot on TV and talking to my mom on the phone. And she said to me, she's like, well, your dad loves that show. And I said, okay. He never really mentioned anything to me about it. She's like, yeah, he, he absolutely loved it. Didn't miss an episode. I said, okay. So she's like, well, you know, that's why you hunted and fished in the places you guys did. Because we were always a little bit deeper, a little bit further back than everybody else. We had a cabin in mid-Michigan and Grayling that was seven miles off the highway and we went in deeper to do our hunting and fishing. So I started thinking about it, putting two to two and two together. I remembered sitting in cedar swamps on perfectly calm days, listening to cedar trees get pushed over, having owls and coyotes that didn't quite sound right and weren't with another pack or acting like they should. So I'm like, all right, I'll 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 start looking. Started looking for things that centered on the UP as far as sightings and things like that went and couldn't find anything. So I started my own group, the UP BSRO or Upper Peninsula Bigfoot Sasquatch Research Organization. And it's been 10 years now and it's grown. I didn't think it'd ever be more than 500 people that looked at it and did anything with it. Now I'm that last count, just over 3,700 that like and follow the page. What does this organization do primarily? We go out, well, the, myself and the other researchers, we go out and we research. We research anything that gets called into us as far as Bigfoot activity. Um, we've recently expanded out into looking into dog man and little people. And if it's a, any type of cryptid in the, in the woods, we'll go out and look for it. So what all have you discovered in the process of your, your research out there in the woods looking for these cryptids? We've come across footprints, handprints, uh, tree breaks, tree structures. We have an understanding of what they eat and areas that they stay in. Describe some of the footprints and handprints and some of the things that, that they eat. Okay, footprints. Footprints and handprints range in size just like just like human footprints and handprints range in size, you you go from real small ones that are babies or adolescents to, I think the biggest one in the collection is 23 inches long. So they they range in size. They're and there's different characteristics that tell you that it's a Bigfoot footprint versus a human footprint or one that can be one that was faked because we've had some of those we've come up against as well. So. And what have you found out on the food sources? Food sources, we've we've taken reports and seen things where they're omnivorous, so they'll eat anything. Um, we've had reports where they've pulled roadkill out of the back of county trucks to they were seen inside of a, on the edge of a cornfield, dragging stalks of corn with them and eating that. So it's, they'll... To, for their caloric intake, they have to eat almost anything, and they're opportunistic when they when they'll eat it. What are some of the most um, interesting reports that you could tell us about? Probably my personal favorite report is a 
a farmer up in the Crystal Falls-ish area. He put all new barbed wire around his around his pastures. And that night heard a, a big yell. Following morning goes out, finds all his new all of his new barbed wire and all the poles stacked up in the middle of a field. It, something took that same evening, something had taken one of the big cattle feeding galvanized pans, picked it straight up out of the bunking and threw it about 30 feet. So the bunking wasn't busted up like it was blown out by wind or a tornado or something like that. It was literally picked straight up out, out of it and thrown. At the time, it had three or four inches of water in it, so roughly 10 to 15 gallons of water. So somewhere between 80, 80 and 120 pounds of water was in the bottom of it, and it was picked straight up out of there. Um, he contacted us, asked us what he, what he could do, and we're like, well, what do you want to do? Are you trying to get rid of them completely? Or are you trying to coexist next to them? He said, as long as they're not up by my barns and messing with my cattle and my family, I really don't care if they're here or not. We made the suggestion of putting up trail cams and motion detector, motion detector lights, because those are the two things that seem to always quiet down activity when they go up. He put up his cameras and his lights. Once the cameras were up for about a week, he called me and he said, I've got 1,200 pictures for you to look at. He says, I don't see anything in them. I said, what do you mean 1,200 pictures for me to look at? He's like, my cameras took that many pictures. I'll send them to you. He sent them through. I took a look at them, didn't see anything. Gave them a second look and started to notice little rock piles right at the edge of where the light was hitting. So I called him back, asked him if the light piles were there or if the rock piles were out there. He's like, yeah, I keep knocking them down and they keep coming back. So I had him set his cameras back up and watch for the rock piles again. Once the rock piles came back, I had him walk on one side of the rock pile in front of his camera and then on the back side of the rock pile. He looked at the pictures and was like, when I walk on the back side of the rock pile, he says, it doesn't take a picture and I, I don't ever see anything. He says, but I always get the pictures of me between the rock pile and the, and the camera. I said, okay, so they're setting up a boundary with you. So you just have to keep in touch now and let us know what happens. So he kept his cameras up, kept taking pictures, kept checking them. Six more months go by. He's like, all right, so I moved my cameras back. The rock piles moved back with it. He says, but they don't bother me up at the house. And whenever I put up new fence, I always hang big pink ribbons on it and I yell into the swamp. So he's coexisting with them on his property. He just makes sure they know what he's doing. And as long as they stay away, he doesn't do anything extra. He doesn't even keep SD cards in his cameras anymore. It wasn't taking a picture on one side of the rock pile. Is that what you're saying? Correct. If you were, if you weren't between the rock pile and the camera, it didn't even take a picture. So was it beyond the motion sensor? It, the rock piles are right at the edge of the motion sensor. Gotcha. They would uh, just continually come back, um, yep. like as if they were setting a boundary. I see. Wow. So is this ongoing? Do you keep up with this person? He, every once in a while, he messages me just to let me know that nothing's going on in the barns and that he's still got his rock piles. But other than that, we, that was all he wanted was a little advice. So that's what we gave him. And I asked him about being able to tell his story. And he said, as long as you don't give my exact location or my name, he says, I have no problem with you using the, using the story. So do you know if he, if they ever had a sighting, a visual sighting of them? Never had a visual sighting when the initial investigator that works with me went out there. He did find footprints. Do you know if they um, see anything else unusual, like the orbs, craft, anything like that out there on their property? He's never said anything about it. And like I said, since he just wanted to kind of get them to back off of his house a little bit, I don't push him too much. I guess we've got a research area by Gladstone that is... It borders a golf course, and it takes place right inside of the Days River trail system. That one's interesting because there's been reports from all around it for years. We've got reports that date back into the early 80s 
and they go right up into last year. I just had a guy call and say he had a class A sighting in there uh, a couple months ago. That's a fairly public place. Um, what are the sightings that have been reported? Right. We've, we've got everything from just vocals that people have had to this last guy was walking his dog and watched one stand stand on the edge of a hill and kind of not notice him. He walked a three-quarter circle around it before it finally stopped what it was doing and walked away over top of the hill from it. Supposed to be a connection between some Bigfoots and UFOs. I can't discount it, but I haven't taken any reports or researched any that are UFO and Bigfoot related at the same time. I just recently had a, a sighting of a UFO myself. About 8.30 in the morning, driving from, let's see, I was driving from the north to the south here in Iron Mountain, Michigan, and saw what I at first thought was a plane, and then it came to almost a, almost a stop, and it looked more like a a military drone with no wings, I guess is the easiest way to explain it. It had a, a tail that stuck up, but there were no wings that protruded out the sides. It slowed down and then took off at a high rate of speed, got just over top of what they call Millie Hill and disappeared. At the same time, I had a driver that was headed from Iron Mountain to Escanaba, so he was driving west to east. And he saw what looked like a 55 gallon drum in the sky cross from south to north and it did the same thing it slowed down almost to a stop and then took off again and disappeared you said that your group also researches anything to do with dog man and, and little people tell me have you have you had many reports on those dog man we probably get we bigfoot is our biggest thing dog man is is by far a very close second to the amount of reports we get um most of our dogman reports have been coming out of an area north of Iron Mountain on M95. So I've got one witness that has 20 some years of experience with dogman out there, all starting from when he was a, a young kid, walked up on one to just last year we had a guy have a road a road sighting of one where he, where it ran across in front of him. So little people we get some reports here and there, but not not a lot. Um, Describe, I, I'm not real familiar with the cryptid little people. Describe what that means. I guess basically it'd be like a gnome or a leprechaun without his hat and the the fancy clothing. It just, they're, they look like small people and they run, they're usually dressed as natives and come, come into campsites. They come into homesteads that are further out and away from from things so people will find little tiny marks in the ground that look similar to footprints. Describe what what people tell you when they give a report on these. It usually starts off with, I know you're a Bigfoot researcher, but what about little feet? And I'm like, okay, what do you mean by little feet? Well, we've been having things come up missing or things are moved around the around our property. And when we were looking in the mud, we found what looked like little tiny footprints <laughs> or people that are camping in it. Are there gnomes in the UP? <laughs> are there are there leprechauns? And they, that's generally how they start. And then we will go out and take a look at the campsites. We'll look at the, if the people invite us to their homesteads, we'll come out there and we'll take a look at what they've had that was moved what they have for evidence, if they take any pictures. Has anyone seen them physically or just the evidence of their being there? We, we've had some people that have said they've seen them. Um, right, usually it's right at the edge of like firelight at night. And they'll, they'll say it looked like your stereotypical Indian from the, Indian or Native American from the, from the Old West. Uh, buckskin type pants, beaded, beaded chest plates, things like that. And they're right on the edge of the firelight, so it's hard to see them. Dark hair, wide noses. Yeah, I've actually, we run our own expeditions and I've also been on quite a few 
BFRO expeditions. Um, I'm one of the researchers in Michigan that's approved to run expeditions for the BFRO. We usually, once we have a spot that has a history of sightings and a, and a place where we can camp, we will advertise on a BFRO website, set up the amount of entry or people coming that we want participants that want to come to it. We kind of, we run through a vetting process just to make sure that they're no crazier than we are when we go out in the woods. Cause you've got to be a little crazy to chase around Bigfoot and all these other things in the woods. And then we, we camp for four days and try to elicit responses from Bigfoot. What all has happened on some of those expeditions? I've had everything from absolutely nothing, where it was just four days of camping, to we've had people have them drop out of trees and run away from them, class A sightings, we've recorded vocalizations, we've found footprints, we've found full trackways. So it's on my expeditions, whether it's BFRO or my personal ones, I try to, even if we have nothing going on, show people the basics of tracking, whether it's tracking a Bigfoot or tracking a deer. I try to I try to give them a little education on how things can be done. The most important thing for any researcher is to keep an open mind. Uh, every every time that I've gone in every time I get to a point where I think I know what Bigfoot's gonna do or what Bigfoot is something happens that makes me rethink and reformulate my entire plan of action. So before before iGlow and iShine became a big thing, I was dead set against it. I was, no, Bigfoot's flesh and blood. There is no way that a Bigfoot can make its eyes glow. Went on an expedition with some other BFRO members in Wisconsin. We walked down a trail walked and we were paralleled the whole time we were walking, walked up a hill, came back and stood and looked back at the hill we were watching and two eyes lit up on the other side of the hill. And I looked around, nobody had lights on. There was no moonlight that night. It was an overcast night. And as soon as I said, did anyone else see someone from the other end of the line, probably 10 yards away from me, 15 yards away, those two red eyes light up on the other side of the gully. I'm like, yep. So then I had to, I'm like, okay, something can make its eyes light up. No normal animal can do that. So it must be Bigfoot. So I had to completely rethink the way that I thought about eye shine and eye glow. Anything else that's happened that's um, caused you to have to kind of rethink your reality about that? Something that I came across recently that I had seen in the past that I never that I never associated with Bigfoot until I saw someone else's video of it. I had a property in Bark River and I would rifle hunt. Some mornings absolutely nothing would happen. I mean I wouldn't even hear hear or see a bird, no bugs, nothing. And I would think that I would see I guess the easiest way to explain it is have you ever seen the movie Predator and the Predator when he's cloaked so you can't really see him? You can kind of see through him. think that I saw that in the mornings and I just put it out of my mind with, ah, my eyes are just tired. I don't know what I'm, what I'm seeing. Never even, know, never even crossed my mind that I might be Bigfoot related. Then I saw someone else's video of it that where they had that happen, where a man-shaped figure came walking through and you could see right through it, just like the predator, but it was filmed in it was filmed in a conifer forest, not in the not in the jungle or not in a rainforest, like like they didn't steal the video from from a predator movie. And I thought in that and it just it clicked something in my head that well maybe that is what I was seeing. I did collect other Bigfoot evidence from there. I did find trees that were braided. I found footprints on that same property. So that's that's probably the one thing that gets me. I don't have a way to prove it because I was the only one that seen it and I didn't tell anybody about it when it happened. Why do you think these things are then? I have no idea what they are. I would 
there's a deep something inside of me that wants to believe they're just flesh and blood and they have more abilities than than we do. But every if I latch onto that, I know that something is going to happen that is going to tell me that they're not. So I the medium that works with us has done mind speak with Bigfoots and she says that they are interdimensional and I can't discount it because I can't prove it to be false. On our last expedition we did last September, we were sitting on a ridge, looking down the ridge and we were watching blue lights, red lights, much like orbs. They, I mean, they weren't, they weren't round like orbs, but they were floating around, appearing and disappearing. And they, it looked to have some kind of intelligence to them, the way they were doing it. We watched them floating around, and then they disappeared. And down the top of the ridge from us, one of the other researchers that was there saw a Bigfoot through a thermal imager as one of us almost walked up to it. We were within 10 yards of it, the researcher that walked up on it. And the, the woman that saw it through the thermal, we're always looking for hot spots through the thermal. This was her first time using one, first time she'd been on a Bigfoot expedition with us. She said that the Bigfoot was almost the same color as the trees in the thermal, so it would have been almost the same temperature. When the guy stopped walking and the Bigfoot took off down the hill, he could hear it. He never saw anything. But she saw it take off and made two steps past the trees and then blended into the woods on the thermal. It never got any hotter than what the trees were. So I don't know if it was because it was a little bit overcast and everything was damp, that the, the fur would have been damp or the hair would have been damp and holding that temperature down, that she didn't see the, the temperature difference. But she saw the she saw the movement through the thermal, and he heard the movement running down the ridge from him. The following day, we went back, and I found the the tracks in the path where it ran down the where it took off running. I I found where it kicked the dirt up, and where it ran down, I followed the broken all the broken ferns down the side of that hill until we got to where it would have stepped into a hole and and laid down because everything was matted there. This Just this past weekend, my wife and I slept on a haunted ship in Manistee, Michigan. And I was picking up a two... De I was picking up hot spots. So if you, you've heard of the cold spots that you'll get when there's a ghost around. So I was picking up hot spots as we were walking through these ships. It, and not hot, they were just warmer than everything else around them someone had a mel meter one of the paranormal people had a mel meter with them that had a temperature sensor on it so when i would find one of the spots because i thought after the first one i thought all right no this isn't happening the second and third one i'm like all right i gotta say something and i told one of the other paranormal researchers they brought their mel meter over and would hold it next to me and we'd have like 59 degrees, then they'd move it into where I said it was warm and it would jump to 61, 63, 65, pull it back out. We could clearly define where the hot spots were and it wasn't open windows. They didn't have heat turned on in the ships yet, anything like that. And then, yeah, then we, then the e, EMF meters and everything else would start going off. So I'm an, I'm an open book and I tend not to, I don't try to push my ideas on anybody. So if you've got a question, anytime reach out to me and ask and I'll answer it to the best of my ability and give you my opinion. So I guess if you're gonna, if you're going to start going out in the field by yourself, a good compass or a good app on your phone that's going to, I use, there's a hunting map, a hunt mapping system that I use called Onyx Hunt Maps. It will track me so that I can find it or find myself. It will also upload all of that information right to my computer at home so that if 
I end up missing, my wife can pull that all up at home and at least give someone a good spot to go look for me. So always have, I guess, always have a hike buddy or someone that knows where you're going to be. Because it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to get turned around when you're in the woods. So, I mean, I, I grew up doing it. So I, I have ways that I get myself in and out of areas without using a, without using a compass and I can walk through the woods at night and still know where I'm at. So I watch, I watch tree lines. My dad was colorblind and that's how he's like, look, he says, I can't see greens and reds. He says, everything's brown. <laughs> so he taught me how to walk in and out of the cedar swamp by counting clumps of cedar trees in the, in the night sky. So I knew to get to my rifle stand, I was three clumps in and two clumps to the right then. I didn't have to be on the same trail every time. I just needed to know where those clumps of cedar trees were to get in and out. And as long as you can skyline them, you, you can see them. Sounds so like I you knew. were in the woods a lot when you were young. Yes. Yep. We, if it flew or crawled or ran, we hunted it. If it swam in streams, lakes, we fished it. Me and a buddy of mine, we go fishing quite a bit. And we went down to the Thompson River over in Trenton. And oh, we got there probably right about dusk. <clears throat> we were there approximately for about an hour hour and a half my buddy seen something like in the shadows like walking through the wood line but we just kind of figured maybe it was a deer or something because we really couldn't see that well approximately about 30 minutes after that i got a feeling like something was watching us so i took my flashlight and shined it over my right shoulder seven and a half eight foot off the ground i got eye shine staring back at me at first, I kind of thought it was my imagination playing with me, and then I seen it blink. So I knew it was there. I just didn't know what it was exactly. Oh, about 20 minutes after that, there's three distinctive tree knocks, extremely loud. It, like, vibrated your body. So me and him just kind of sat there. About 20 minutes later, it done it again. So me and him started packing up our stuff because at that time, we were ready to leave. My friend picked up a log and hit a rock three times. And then it knocked back at us, which kind of terrified us. Because we didn't really know what was going to happen at that point in time. It went on, oh, probably for about another hour or so. And then the uh, next day, we went back in the daylight to see what, see if we could see anything or find anything or and my buddy found a footprint. He wears a size 15 double E cowboy boot. And that footprint made him look like he wore a size 10 like my size. And then there's some structures. And we thought uh, we seen a stump. What well, looked like a big round stump. And then it moved. It was a reddish brownish color. Its shoulders was probably as wide as a pickup truck. It was a uh, pretty terrifying. 